It was 2002, I was home in Picto, just uh, minding my own business. It was around 11 o'clock at night and the phone rang. So I answered the phone, heard his voice. Hello? Hello? <laughs> this is Stompin' Tom Connors calling from Ontario. And I'm looking for Dave Gunning. And I thought, what the heck, this can't really be Stompin' Tom phoning me. Listen, boy, J.P. Cormier from Cape Breton Island says you play the bass guitar. But I want to know if you drink. <laughs> sure, I'd like to have a few beers, you know. Well, that's good, boy, because we're not a bunch of preachers out in the road. <laughs> now, I pay everybody the same and all that, but before you get to the gig, i got to know one more thing. And it's really important. I need to know if you can handle your liquor. And I thought, what, what kind of job interview is this? It's just, it's just twisted. I said, sure, I guess you know, I get drunk if I you know, have too much or enough depending on my goal at the time, but I, I promise that I'll uh, be there until the last note is played. I won't miss a, I won't miss a note. I'll be there to the last gig and, uh, and, and uh, you know, I'll stay up and drink with you and all that. He goes, that's what I want to hear, boy. I just want to make sure you weren't one of them fallsy downsies. <laughs> So once you knew I wasn't a fallsy downsy, stop a Tom Dictionary to be released really soon, folks. <laughs> so anyway, that was basically the entire conversation. He said, well, I look forward to meeting you in a couple months' time. And he hung up the phone, and that was it. And I'm thinking, what just happened there? And then, so I called J.P. Cormier, who was home in Cape Breton. I said, J.P., I think Stomp and Tom just, just hired me to play bass guitar for, for the next tour here in a couple of months. And J.P. said, wicked. I knew he'd call you. I said, uh, man, thanks so much for recommending me for this gig. It's going to be, going to be the experience of a lifetime, getting to, to know a Stompin' Tom and, and travel with him for seven weeks. And uh, I said, you know, JP, you played with, with Tom when you were in your early 20s. What can you tell me? How, how should I be preparing myself for the Stompin' Tom tour? And JP said, get your liver ready. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of river dance, eh? But the Stompin' Tom tour is known as Liver Dance. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, wow, okay. And well, I have my electric bass and stuff, and uh, you know, what, what pointers can you give me here? And he goes, well, just uh, get every single Stompin' Tom recording you can get your hands on. They all sound easy, like three chord songs, but don't let that fool you, because you never know when he's gonna change chords. <laughs> But once you know the songs, he plays them the same every night. But another thing I was going to tell you is you ain't playing electric bass. I said, what do you mean? He asked me to play bass. Oh yeah, he wants you to play bass all right, but let me tell you something about Tom, Dave. Tom's old-fashioned. So I told him that you'd play the stand-up bass for him. What? I don't play the stand-up bass. I can't learn how to play it in two months. It's not enough time to learn a new instrument, especially upright bass. And JP said, don't be such a wimp. Just go buy one. They're easy to play. <laughs> Easy for you to play. You know, JP plays everything. For those that don't know JP, uh, sort of a mini bio would be, I think when JP was 17 years old, he played banjo for Bill Monroe on the Grand Ole Opry. He played mandolin, electric guitar, dobro, fiddle, um, and banjo for Marty Stewart and Waylon Jennings and their touring bands. And the guy is an, a genius. He's a multi-instrumentalist and a, he's great at everything. So I said, JP, man, the upright bass, you could learn how to play it no problem in two months, but I, I don't know. And uh, he said, look, I wouldn't have stuck my neck out for you if I didn't think you could do this. So shut up and go buy the damn bass. I don't want to call you. I don't want to hear from you again until you buy one. So that was it. That was if you're up for the challenge kind of thing. So I went down to Halifax that following Monday and bought a stand-up bass, but an upright bass. You know that really sick feeling you get when you buy something that's quite expensive, you don't know if you're going to get much use out of it? <laughs> that's how I felt. So I bought the new upright bass, it was my new upright. I was on my way back home to Picto County, and I pulled into a truck stop to get gas. And as I was paying for the gas, I noticed six new Stomp and Tom CDs for sale on the counter that had just been released, sort of best of collection with the Maple Leaf, little theme recordings. I bought all six of them to add to my collection that I already had at home. The guy working at the gas station said, you're a big Stompin' Tom fan. <laughs> if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> How much do I owe you? So I bought this six Stompin' Tom CDs with my new CD collection, my new upright bass in the back of the van. I then went straight to the Picto liquor store. 
<laughs> I figured I better start rehearsing right away. It was more like training for the Olympics, to be honest with you. So that's what I did for a couple of months. I cranked the Stomp and Tom tunes as loud as they go, and I played the upright bass for half an hour a night because I didn't want to raise a blister. And I drink as many beers as I could, and that's how I conditioned myself for the Stomp and Tom tour. So I met Stomp and Tom in Brockville, Ontario. And uh, I remember the sitting talking to him. I was really nervous sitting across the table from him. We were playing Scrabble. Tommy Jr., his son, and JP went outside to talk, and I was just left alone sitting across the table from Stompin' Tom with his big black hat on, smoking his cigarettes and drinking his beer, and he's staring into my soul, like he's not saying anything, and I'm really nervous. I start nervous chatter. I start talking, nervous talking, like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> And I said, I don't know if JP, I don't know if JP told you, but geez, I'm so happy that you asked me to come out on this trip. You know, it's really great to get to to travel with a living legend, you know. And I grew up listening to your music, as lots of people have. And, and uh, so this is a great honor for me to be out here. But I don't know if JP told you, I just learned how to play the upright bass a couple of months ago. And I realized what I was saying. I, I was like, I couldn't stop myself. And he stares at me and says, what are you talking about? I thought he was going to fire me and send me home right away. Instead, he said, why don't you relax and grab another beer? You don't have to worry about making mistakes on my show. I'll be making more than you. So the pressure was totally off. And he said, another thing while I'm talking to you. I know that you're a singer-songwriter, boy, but singer-songwriters are a dime a dozen. Everybody's a singer-songwriter. Come on, you need to have a gimmick, boy. Something to make yourself stand out so folks won't forget who you are. I mean, look at me, for example. I knew I couldn't sing. And I knew I couldn't play the guitar very good either. So one night at the Maple Leaf Hotel up in Timmins, Ontario, I started stomping my foot on plywood. And I've sold a million records. Hard to argue with that. But anyway, regardless of what Stompin' Tom says in his humility, I love the man. I love his singing and his songwriting, his guitar playing. He's one of the most important Canadian singer-songwriters that we have. Every song he ever wrote was about Canada. These quirky little things about us, about Canadians, that, that have helped develop our personality. If you take Stompin' Tom out of the Canadian equation, Canada will be a little bit more boring, I think. I, uh, I think we're very lucky to have Stompin' Tom. So I do this out of respect for Tom, a little tribute to him. I'm just not too sure which one I'm going to do yet. But I figure I'm pretty safe starting with this groove.